Hello, welcome back to Classic Retro Modern's YouTube channel. Um, you'll notice instantly, well, you'll notice a lot of things actually. The first one is um, we're inside a car. It's um, the P38 Range Rover, which is looking a little bit muddy um, following some byway driving or green laning on Dartmoor over the weekend. And the other thing is there's a different voice at the helm this time on radio, BBC Radio Classic Retro Modern. Um, Richard Dredge, our editor, has been whisked away to a Ferrari photo shoot get him and uh, so he's left me in charge um, the deputy editor um, and if you familiar with my petrol blog youtube channel you know that the standards are pretty low so please don't expect anything other than mediocrity for this preview video stroke seasonal message um, without further ado i guess it's time for the big reveal this is issue seven and yes indeed it is the one with the matra rancho on the front cover and not only am i going to reveal just going to close the ashtray on this P38 here. Bear with me. Um, not only is it the subscriber issue, but if I do this with this magic whisk, I've got a Christmas jumper on, by the way, which... Anyway, that's digressing. Um, look, the retail copy and the subscriber issue. And mine arrived yesterday. I don't know if anybody else has had their copy yet. So this is... Um, this is this is like a live unboxing video. Um, perhaps I should have done it on Boxing Day. For now, for now. Anyway, without further ado, let's um, take a look through what you can expect in this edition. Um, there's a usual, a usual introduction from the main man, um, and there's your contents page, which gives you a brief flavour of what you can expect. I do apologise, this is a very um, ham-fisted, amateurish video, but um, hey, that's me all over. Um, so yeah, just skipping through without giving too much away, the normally you can see our regular feature, which is ignition at the start of the magazine. Um, Colin, our latest. I keep I keep opening the ashtray with my elbow, which is as bad as professional as things get. Um, Colin Cork, our new columnist, uh, in there. Our social club is back for another another day, and yet another picture of Safran, and um, a little mention there for. Kenny Smith, um, so check that out. And if you haven't checked us out on social media, there are our channels. Also a big welcome this month to a new correspondent, Sam Glover. There's a quick look behind the scenes of his magnificently eclectic collection of cars. I thought I had an, a good collection of cars, or no, I didn't think I had a good collection of cars, an obscure collection of cars, but this Sam takes it to another level. So. Um, Big welcome to Sam. Check out his words and pictures in issue seven. Stephen Tanner's back with some words from Down Under. The Darren Walker's back um, with some words on a Montego, but not the Montego you're thinking of. Um, do check out his YouTube channel at Free Pine Chips Garage. As usual, said Shed's Heaven. And I will, I will point out about these period photos. Um, these aren't just your standard shots that you've seen in other classic car magazines. Many of these pictures that we featured in Shed 7 haven't been seen before. Um, so they are worth checking out. I do apologise, I've also realised my knee is hitting the, um, the brittle plastic of the Range Rover's dashboard. So um, honestly, Richard Dredd will be back next month with some more professional scripted slickness. Is that a word? It is now. Um, our market insight this month is the MGB. Evergreen classic, if ever there was one. Uh, kicking tyres, slight change to the format this, this month for kicking tyres. Um, the contributors who nominated the cars are given you their own words. And I'd like to welcome Ilan PR's Nick Bailey as our Have I Got News For You guest presenter this month. You can see what he picked in the latest issue. And there's some more in five words, including a Lada Neva. It's on my list of cars to buy in 2022. Um, Richard Dredge has been um, interviewing the Young Retro Motor Club and that's well worth a read. It's great to see interest in classics alive and well at, with younger, younger audience. Younger audience? Younger audience. So do read his interview with Georgina Wooten and Owen Burgess um, because it's encouraging to see so many youngsters into classic and retro cars. There is the aforementioned P38 in all of its... Um, well, I call it glory. Can you call a P38 glorious? Probably not, but it, it's there with an MOT. Um, spoiler alert, it's now got an MOT. Good news. 
a couple of Triumph Vitesses in our Your Classic section, which remains incredibly popular. Thank you to everyone who submitted cars this year. Um, there's many more in the bank and many more will follow. And many thanks to James Weber for his contribution this year, drumming up support for Your Classics. Another couple in this, in this issue, including a Lego Volvo 144, which is um, always a lot of fun. Renault Twingo, always a favourite here at Classic Retro Modern. And, and a roof tent, again, another favourite. <laughs> Um, our reader restoration this month is a Mercedes G-Wagon, so um, do check that out. That's on P38 to G-Wagon in a few pages, that's quite some going. Uh, it's a very good piece actually, well worth a read. Our period advertising is still in full swing, here's um, the Honda, Honda Prelude. Another car I really ought to buy but haven't yet, maybe I should next year. Richard Hesseltine, you might remember his profile of Eric Carlson. Um, which was fantastic. I think this one's even better, his profile of the free-thinking maverick Colin Chapman. Beautifully put, um, designed by um, Roy McCarthy, by the way. Ace designer, Roy McCarthy. Do check that out. That's the sound of the P38 dashboard, by the way. Well, here's, here's the main, the main well, the cover feature. Um, driving a Talbot Matra Rancho. Meeting my hero. That's, that's what that was. Um, a car that I've admired ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper and was playing with my Matchbox Super Kings Rancho on the living room floor. So um, uh, do check it out. I felt a lot of weight of expectation um, writing about that car because I know so many people love it. So um, no pressure there, Gav, but I hope I've delivered something that you find vaguely interesting. More period advertising, subscribe and save, and also a hint of something else you're gonna see in the mag in a moment. A profile piece on the Rover, Rover? Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow um, with some wonderful um, studio shots from John Colley. Um, so well worth checking out. That car's for sale, by the way, with the number plate for £35,000. More details in the mag. I'm not going to zoom in too close. Cause I don't want you to read anything before you buy the mag. That would be silly. Um, big in it's an interesting article. Haggerty have um, released a list of cars that haven't gone up in value this year or have at least remained relatively static. So these are the cars, because if the media is to be believed, classic car prices are on the up all the time. You know, buy a car today, it's worth double tomorrow. These cars prove that it's not necessarily the case. So these might be cars to buy now, um, and um, maybe you see a price rise at some other point. There's an ad there for a terrible website, just ignore that. Uh, so here we are, here we are with Regent's Treat. Or, that headline doesn't really work because um, I'm reliably informed that it's pronounced Regent. So Regent Street doesn't quite work as well. Um, but do read what it's like to drive an Innocenti Regent on the, in its ancestral home of Longbridge. Um, but as you'll discover, it's, um, the links to Longbridge are a little bit less um, obvious than, than the Allegro. But um, fantastic car, by the way. Fantastic. More information on youngsters in the classic car scene, which is really encouraging. Bearing in mind, I've got two children that are sort of, well, one child who's approaching that sort of age, another one close behind. Um, be interesting to see how, if they fall into the classic car market. Um, well worth reading that. Richard Dredge has put a lot of effort into these two articles this month. So do check them out because um, we are we are fully supportive of getting more youngsters into the classic car scene. Uh, Ace designer Roy McCarthy and his lost love, which is a mini Mayfair together with his charming and unique illustration style. Um, so do check that out. Richard Hasseltine nominates his six of the best special Spridgets in his usual style. Ben Hooper, he's back. He was in issue one. He's now back with his Rover 220 GSI, now departed Rover 220 GSI. Great words, lovely pictures, good stuff from Ben. Um, some great um, living with coming up, actually. I, I edited one today. Uh, next month is going to be a good one as well. I'm not going to tell, give you too much information. Here's Richard Hesseltine again, this time on the Bertone um, Jaguar Ascot, or Ascot, as the Queen would call it. I um, waxed lyrical about the Chrysler Neon, which is another car that I want to add to the fleet next year. So if you do find an original early Neon, do let me know. One, preferably one that isn't rusted away. Uh, buying Guide to the Hillman Imp, Britain's other fantastic super mini. Um, and, and keep talking of the Mini. Um, can you believe it's two decades since the launch of the BMW Mini? Um, we can, because we've just written a piece on it, or Richard Dredd has done one of his ultimate guides. So if you're thinking of buying one of those in 2022, this is the only guide you need to read. 
I think we're nearly there because it's good because my back is beginning to ache and I, I know you're getting quite bored. There's a whole tin of Quality Street that you want to be diving into and I fancy a bottle of slow gin. Maybe not a bottle, maybe a start with a glass. Um, but we're nearly there. Another Montego there. Is it a classic Audi A3 Mark One? Is it that time yet? You'd probably say not, but I try and convince you otherwise. And, um, and details of next month, which is cover car, Lancia Delta Integrale. Um, so there you go in their full glory subscriber edition, retail edition. That comes out on the 31st of December. Um, but you know, go online, order this, and you might get yours earlier. Um, I think it, all that leaves to be said now is to say a huge thank you to everybody who's um, been in touch this year with messages of support. Um, anyone who's bought the magazine, huge thanks for that, because ultimately it will be judged by our sales. Anyone who's liked us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, it, it, you know, your support has been unbelievable. I think this time last year, we didn't have a name. We had an idea that we wanted to put a mag together, a mag that we wanted to read, but we had nothing. We had no name, no idea what it would look like. We had no, we didn't have a design team. You know, it was very early days. And if you'd have said to us this time next year, we'd have a magazine that we're this proud of, um, I think we would have bitten your arm off. Um, we, were, we were that hungry. Um, but no, honestly, I, overwhelmed by the response. Um, big plans for next year, uh, widen the distribution network, um, big features planned for next summer. Now, you name it, we're making this magazine bigger and better next year. So your continued support is required and um, we thank you in advance for that. And I know I'm beginning to waffle now. And um, so I'll, what I'll do is I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Um, have a safe and healthy festive period and um, we'll see you again in the new year. Thank you for watching.